So to the many people who have been asking me if I'm no longer doing the retrospectives, you may be surprised to see this. To be clear, I never intended to stop, I just kept forgetting. For two years. So let's not keep you waiting any longer. But first, your likes! Please, cue. And if you enjoyed this video by the end and you aren't subscribed already, please consider it. It's the Transformers Legacy Year One Retrospective. Legacy has so far been a very interesting toy line, but also a bit rocky. I'm sure that most people are thrilled with it since it is the first toy line in forever to give love to the wider franchise than just the regular G1 stuff. However, that has not prevented it from making some weird or horrible missteps. I will say that for me, the first thing that comes to mind about the whole thing is that it really kind of set the tone going forwards for Hasbro's unholy distribution. They were never good at it before, but Legacy was really the start of figures beginning to show up actually years late to most retailers, or not being able to even find the stuff online and not because of scalpers, and it seemed like Hasbro started shipping their entire stocks of specific figures to specific countries. So if you wanted certain figures, you'd better have a friend in Australia or the UK or Malaysia or wherever else. So let's try to not hold that against the toys. As always, starting from the ground up, Wave 1 contained a figure that I typically associate with the final wave of Kingdom, Core Class Hot Rod. And I'm not sure that I'm going to have video of this because I stuck this thing somewhere in the hopes of forgetting that it exists. This thing is a piece of shit pulled straight out of Unicron's asshole. This has the unassailable title of the worst core class to ever inflict its existence upon us. But it doesn't just stop there, it's also just one of the worst legend scale figures anyone has ever shat into the world. It looks like the costume a slasher movie serial killer would wear, it poses like an insult, the transformation hates you personally, and the alt mode is a child's drawing of Hot Rod. But it's not endearing, because you hate the kid who drew it, since they're a sticky little goblin with jammy fingers. Then Iguanus is quite possibly the best core class they've ever made. It looks cool and fun, it was a brilliant idea to combine the monster mode with his alt mode, getting rid of that lame-ass third wheel on his motorcycle that was the original robot mode, and to top it all off, they packed the most posing any of these little guys has ever had into it, with feet that give him all the energy of Bruce Lee. I don't have too much more to say, this one just rules. Skywarp is just a flat repaint of the Kingdom Starscream, so that's about the long and short of him, other than when I did review this, I left him on the floor to edit the video, which I knew was a bad idea, I could just sense that someone was going to step on him, at which point my brother walked into the room and by the power of a one by one Lego, his foot was drawn to it, snapping the little Caltrop stabilizer off. We glued that back on and it looks mostly fine, but the pain of it dropped him to the floor. And yeah, that's a pretty robust little piece of plastic to have broken off with a soft part of your foot. Then we have the Wave 1 Deluxes, and this is where things get controversial. I will sit here and actually defend this one. Prime Universe RC is really not that bad. She is unfortunately, however, like the poster child for 5 out of 10. The robot mode I still say is a lot more accurate than people give it credit for. The problem is just that it is vertically squashed, and her hips are mounted too low. If you just stretch the design, it begins to look a lot more like it's supposed to. However, even if we take that into account, the result still looks really uninspiring. The posability is a snore, the transformation is just barely on the wrong side of unfun, and then the alt mode is pretty impressive. So like that's a 5, a 5, a 3, and a 7, which averages to a 5 out of 10. And despite this being that, this did not need to be the new seed sideswipe. That thing was a 5 out of 10 in the best way possible, so yeah, I was pretty happy to get a ton of those. This was a 5 out of 10 in a, I guess I'm okay with this once kind of way. Then we have the figure that lied to us. Yes, drag strip was the first punch in Hasbro's two-hit combo that was tricking us into buying the Menasaur set, by being one of the only good figures in it, so it got sold first. That way we think, hey, if they're all this good, then I guess I'm in it for the long haul. The good news is, is that this works as a standalone. Robot mode looks better than the show model because yeesh, that one was a blistering experience on the eyes. The possibility is fine, good feet, bad hands, the transformation was pretty fun and creative, and the alt mode looked great. It really is just too bad about the rest of the limbs. After that, we got kickback, and when I reviewed this guy, I did not expect him to be the best one, and yet another example of Hasbro tricking us into picking up the others to complete the team because we were already invested, largely because this guy just isn't very good. He's not bad, he's like, really boring. The one thing that I can give this is that the robot mode looks right, and he does pose satisfyingly, if not particularly inspiringly. But then the transformation is basically him just having a lie down on his back, and then you're done. And the alt mode really should have just tried a lot harder. It's not terrible, but you really needed to give me more for the price. And then after him, his teammates were way worse. Then there was Skids, another really middle-of-the-road figure, and I'm beginning to sense a pattern with Year 1 of Legacy. This is pretty much just a fatter version of the Siege Prowl with new shins. Mine has famously borked QC in the arm, but for the most part this is an inoffensive, fairly fun figure. Honestly, this one would be a great gift for a child, as the transformation isn't going to confuse them, though the clear plastic does present me pause, since they might snap it there. For Voyagers, I covered Blaster and Kingdom, so we really just have Bulkhead to talk about, and Bulkhead was kind of the opposite of the RC. Unlike RC, who looked just like herself but somehow didn't capture the spirit of herself, Legacy Bulkhead pretty much looks nothing like Prime Bulkhead, but he really captures the soul of the character. Despite him being more fit than he's typically depicted, he feels like the big heavy set, tough, jovial guy from the show. The figure is pleasant to the touch with great QC, the posability is the good kind of 5 out of 10, maybe even a 6 if you include the cheated ab crunch, the transformation is pretty good and the alt mode is great, though you do have to put up with a degree of parts forming and the figure will never look complete if you lose 
excuse that part, but I have seen worse instances. These early waves were largely Kingdom repacks, so skipping Galvatron, Laser Optimus Prime is a figure that I really liked when I got it, and I liked it less and less every time I got it after that. This was a decent mold that got flogged way too hard. A pretty fun Optimus with a solid look, though very bad shoulders, a cool head, a novel transformation, and a really good alt mode and trailer. But the hands blow big chunks, the transformation wore out its welcome, the legs only ever looked acceptable here, and the articulation was always weak. When these don't transform, there is not really a reason why the knees should bend less than the sieges when that had a lot more going on in there. Ultimately, if this mold looks good to you, grab only the version you most care for, and let the rest pass you by. You will be happier that way. Then the commander managed to come out right at the start of the line. So this was the haymaker of the Menosaur set that Hasbro threw our way to make us interested in getting the whole thing. And it landed so hard. As much as I feel like the set was a con, the core of the combiner was at least not phoned in. This thing felt great, looked great, it made me actually like Motormaster and Menosaur more than not at all, which was a real achievement for it. The transformations were both interesting and fun, and the alt mode ruled, being a near perfect version of itself. And the combined mode was super cool and had tons of promise. It's just too bad that every member that came after this left me with a deep-seated loathing, poisoning my soul, and ruining all the goodwill this gen Generated. And I'll just say it now, sadly, the Legacy Menosaur set is a complete failure. It's not worth it. It's just not. It's a whole heap of money to spend on a team where over half of the members just fucking suck on their own. And they don't even manage to help the combined mode. What well, with the way that Dead End never looks properly attached, for some reason just floating a little too far off the bicep to look convincing, and the other two just hanging off the backs of the legs like a pair of lampreys, doing nothing to get there and looking stupid. So bad on every level. They chose the wrong place to put them, and putting them there made them look terrible. I guess just be happy that the legs can take regular combiner Wars shins and simply replace these losers. I never bought Cybertron Metroplex. I'm glad for fans of the show to have the option to get this guy, but I've never seen it myself. Not because I think it's bad, just because it comes after Energon, and I cannot find the motivation to give that famed dumpster fire visible from space a try. And I have to get through that to get to Cybertron. Yes, I know that they're different series is in Japan. Anyways, I have no connection to the character, and I think it looks stupid. Plus, the alt mode is lame and less convincing than most city formers, and that's really saying something. In Wave 2 of the Cores, I never bought the G2 Megatron, why would I? And Optimus Prime was just a re-release of the Decent Kingdom one. But the Shockwave ruled. People keep insisting to me that the Combiner Wars one was better, and to that I say, okay, I'll take you at your word. But that doesn't mean that this one is bad. It's just a tiny little awesome version of the Siege Leader class guy. It poses well, it has a fun transformation. If you ever wanted an adorable space dreadnought of death, this is your toy. And it makes a decent gun to go with larger figures. If you don't have the CW one, I say this fills the role. Then there was Elita One, a figure which I stand by my review of weird, but it can be two things, and it's weird and bad. It's kind of just a fully made up version of the character, so if you want any particular one, this won't do it for you. The face is more unsettling than the Earth Spark one, which is a high bar set atop a mountain with no running room to cross. The kibble is bad and it should feel bad, the transformation has all the satisfaction of petting a wet, smelly dog, and the alt mode is just not her. I would rather have the power of the primes as my Elita, and you probably know how much of an insult that is. Speaking of insults, Prime Universe Knockout, a figure that if it had the correct head could have been at least tolerable. You'd say that, well, the body is a catastrophic fuck up that this figure never should have been retooled out of, but at least it's got the right alt mode and at least it's got the right face. But you can't say that, so just what the fuck? Not only does this just not look like him, it looks like ass. A man's both generic and lame, two things that Knockout should not be. And he may be based on a mold that I happen to really like, but this doesn't have any of that thing's style or bravado, and as a result, I like none of it now. The posability on Impresses, the transformation does not inspire, but it's a pretty sweet alt mode at the very least. Then you had Beast Wars Tarantulas, and had this been in Kingdom, it would have been one of the highlights of the whole line. The worst things I have to say about this are the forearms are short, and the transformation is only fine. Plus, the beast mode is intentionally inaccurate to look more like the real world animal than he did the show model. Outside of that, the robot mode is fantastic. If the Transarts figure didn't exist, this would be the best looking version of the character. The posability is good, the quality is great, and the alt mode, despite its inaccuracies, is top tier, and gives you the skin crawling vibes that the character should. Then you have shit. No, wait, I'm sorry, then you have piece of shit. No, wait, I'm sorry, then you have piece of fucking shit. No, wait, I'm sorry, then you have godforsaken piece of fucking shit. No, wait, I'm sorry, I mean fuck this figure to the depths of hell where it was spawned from. It's Legacy Wild Rider. Hey guys, have you ever thought to yourselves, man, I hope they make a new version of Combiner Wars Wild Rider, but literally worse in every single possible way? No? Fuck you. Maybe I should rephrase the question. Do you want a smaller, worse articulated, more brittle version of the Combiner Wars Wild Rider that has the same transformation, but somehow they've made it about as appealing as licking the underside of a shoe pulled out of a waste treatment plant by ruining the tolerances and the forces required to do it that is a joke of a combined mode that does nothing, and to top it all off, because I'm fairly sure that the designer is not allowed to live alone lest they swallow their own tongue, it engages in the positively deranged effort of making the backpack smaller by making it bigger. Truly, the designer must be a visionary who huffs himself to sleep every night on cheap glue. You don't want that, you say. Fuck you. I'm not even going to pretend that this is anything other than a fucking travesty. It does one thing okay, and that's looking like the dude. Everything else about him is worthy of ruining the set as a whole on its own. Then there was G-Axis, a guy with a face like a thwomp from Mario who smelled the Wild Rider's designer's unclean asshole. 
This is an intentionally sinfully ugly figure with awful colors that can apparently, instead of yellow, turn green. Of course it turns green, Hasbro. If it turned yellow, it might look like it fits. Anyways, it's a figure of all those things. That's actually really cool. The hideousness of the whole thing has a charm to it. The posability is really good, the transformation is a lot of fun, and the alt mode is bordering on incomplete, what with the entire underside being basically a write-off, but the overall package is fun. Real talk though, I had one fan unsubscribe because I was positive about the shoulders being able to extend on these hinges for more range, because that's not a real joint, so it doesn't deserve the credit. When I'm negative, people are mad, and when I'm positive, people are mad. Then you've got Suckwing. Sorry, I don't have the figure in hand anymore. I've long since returned my borrowed copy, so please tolerate the photographs. This is one of those weird figures that adds up to be less than the sum of its parts, because it's a pretty great-looking robot mode with really good posability, with two pretty fun transformations, and those transformations turn it into a crime and a sin. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it's a jet that is somehow even less aerodynamic than the original toy, which is an absolute feat of engineering to have achieved, and a tank that is a dick coming off of it in a mode where you can separate it entirely from the robot by driving out one pin Ursi style. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love the Titan's Return tank. It's the completely wrong tank, but I love it. It can be the wrong tank. That's fine. But for some reason, they took the wrong tank here, and they slapped on the single worst piece of G1 accuracy I've ever seen to curse a figure in order to claim that it's the right tank with the tank dick. Then they made that part horribly wrong too, and I just want to understand. If you were going to do that, then why didn't you make it the right tank, or make it even the right tank dick? All you had to do was sculpt this differently. That's it. The tank had no reason to look wrong. It's like you did it just to fuck with us. I still wouldn't have liked the tank dick. That's something you could have excised from the design and only improved it, but I wouldn't feel the blood boil within my veins with the desire to hang the designer's internal organs on my walls due to my contempt for what they've done here. Then in the final waves of Core Class, you had a sound wave that's a re-release of the Awesome Kingdom one. Seriously, pick that one up if you've yet to grab it. It's like a pocket version of the masterpiece. But then you had Bomb Burst, and honestly, none of the Core Classes really disappointed me like this guy. He's not heinous like Hot Rod was, but unfortunately, he's like a 3 or a 4 out of 10 on everything. Robot mode doesn't look as awesome as it should, nor halfway near as cool as the Iguanas. Posability is fine, transformation is garbage, the alt mode doesn't want to hold together, and it looks bad. There's just nothing about this that satisfies. Wave 3 Deluxes start with Crankcase, a questionable retool of the pretty decent skids mold, with worse QC but a cooler alt mode and a way better paint job. It also scores brownie points for being a figure of a character that people actually want. To be fair, IDW made both of them superstars. It's got all the same pros and cons as its father figure and a couple of its own cons, but it looks a bit more stylish while doing it. So I'd say the figure is a 6 out of 10. Dead End, another severely disappointing member of the Menosaur set. A far worse retool of the drag strip mold that, while okay in robot mode, lacks the charm of his teammate, but has a worse version of the transformation that has parts pop off of it and an alt mode with quality so trash that I think the garbage can might try to rebel if I put it in there. Where mine's back couldn't hold together because the pegs meant to attach the whole thing were actually pushing it apart, and clipping those off only solved like half of my problem there. And as I said before, this sits on the combined mode about as well as a greasy teenager's hand does on the shoulder of the supermodel he's taking a picture with. Fuck, I didn't realize how many really bad figures there were in this line before starting this script. So you know that whole bit I did with Wild Rider? I should have saved that for Point Blank. This was the second worst figure of 2022, and it's a miracle I haven't shot this with a shotgun, then dumped the remains in acid, and set that whole concoction on fire. A hideous mutant of a figure. Truly one of the most eye-rendingly ugly things the fandom has ever seen. Of a version of the character that no one wants, with some of the worst torso posability we've seen in decades. Arms that are so useless it boggles the mind and fills the soul with a seething black mass of hatred. And an alt mode that, while ugly and weird, is accurate. And a transformation that, were it not for these side parts having all the hold of a fish trying to climb a tree, would actually be pretty good. Fuck, this thing is ugly. Then there's Skullgren, a figure that I've actually warmed to a good bit. The posability is better than I initially thought, and while the head still has its frustrations, I find that they matter less when you deal with the figure's other great problem, the alt mode. The one this guy is supposed to turn into is quite frankly insulting. It is a thing that was so heavily cut back on as to become less than a shadow of what it was intended to be. It was supposed to be awesome, and wound up being so pathetic it was funny. Seeming to be a jury-rigged piece of farming equipment people stuck a couple recoilless rifles to, like some Slav Kings out for a joyride, as an improvised tank, it would have sucked. As a thing that wasn't supposed to be even that, it sucked harder. However, the fan mode for it basically fixed all of that, and it turned it into the heavy metal death machine it was always supposed to be, even if it's a silly nonsensical vehicle. It is kind of infuriating, though, that they decided to change the size classes on the pretenders. Why are we not allowed to have a consistent team of these guys? Then there was Beast Wars Inferno, and Legacy just kept doing the Beast Boys great justice. Once again, this had the wrong alt mode, but it somehow turned an ant cute. What is this, honey, I shrunk the kids? I want to point out that when I tried to make that joke last time, it was right in the script, I just said home alone because apparently there's something wrong with my brain. 
Anyways, this is probably the best posing figure in the entire line, having double joints everywhere he needed them, a great head, and an opening mouth. Speaking of the head, it's a work of art, both in pretty paint that makes my inner caveman quite happy, as always, shiny thing good, but also capturing the character completely and exquisitely. The transformation is on the worst end of fine, but overall, the figure did more right by him than most of the guys who actually got figures in Kingdom. Then you had Armada Starscream, and this was almost great. They almost had a winner here. It looks like him in both modes, and it poses pretty damn good. Unfortunately, the transformation came up with leg flaps that you basically need tools to open, and the quality control seems to have been handled by a particularly stupid blindfolded toddler, because not only does the alt mode just not hold together, but the vast, vast, vast majority of these figures have a left leg that falls off if you dare to use the thigh swivel. Outside that, the figure is about as floppy as a half-inflated, wacky, waving, inflatable, arm-flailing tube man. On the plus side, it looks sick as fuck, but why couldn't Hasbro just make this thing good? They had everything lined up, ready to go in, except for effort. Quality control was such a bitch for Legacy Wave 3. Lastly, there is Transmetal 2 Megatron. It's glorious. How many times do I have to say it? I gave this thing the title of the best. I put it in my best of year. I could have sworn that I told you all to buy it at some point with a recommendation. This thing does everything great. It looks great, except for the normal head. It's super accurate. Posability is fantastic for a chug figure. The transformation is really fun. And the alt mode is pretty much everything that you could want from a Dragon Megatron. This received my highest honor. It earned an upgrade kit. And now at the end, I just have one question. Was Legacy Year One kind of bad? Like, going into this, I was kind of sure that this video was going to wind up extremely positive. Then I found that I had a ton to rant about and mock. And while that was all very fun, at the same time, it did seriously surprise me, because I was under the impression that the majority of these were going to be overwhelmingly good. I guess looking at it, it breaks down evenly into 10 good and 10 figures that I would qualify as bad, with the rest either being mediocre or figures that don't count because they're from Kingdom, and that's really not a healthy year-wide line. Looking at it now, Legacy Year One stumbled more than it succeeded. It does feel like they were at least trying, taking stabs, and making daring moves, but at this point, it didn't quite pay off, and maybe that was just because they hadn't gotten their feet under them yet, but at the same time, it makes me worry about what I will conclude when I get to Evolution and United. Still, this line gave us was probably the three best mainline Beast Wars figures ever released, and that accounts for a lot. But that's not half of what I have to say, but it's enough of what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.